is a demo of mango papaya bath bombs. Hi guys, I am back with another video and on today's video, we are gonna be doing something super cool. I'm gonna be making my best-selling mango papaya bath bombs. If you're new to this channel, you probably found me through one of my bath bomb making videos and since I have posted those videos, my process has changed a little bit and also I've been able to gather a lot of questions that people have and I really hope to take the opportunity today to answer a bunch of those questions. And on this video, I'm not only gonna be showing you how I make those bath bombs, but also how I paint to those bath bombs so stick to the end to see how I do that. If you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Jerrica and I am the owner and creator of Quench and on this channel I show you how I make my products, my bath bombs and my soaps and I also talk about how I sell those products and give a few tips and tricks on how to run a soap and bath bomb business. So if that is something that you are into, please keep watching, like and subscribe. And everybody who has already subscribed, you guys are so amazing. We are almost at 9,000. Wow, <laughs> that's just amazing. Thank you guys so much. You guys are just super amazing. And now without further ado, let's get into the video. I get asked this question so much and I'm gonna answer it right here. Where do I get these bath bomb trays? <laughs> I get these from the Bath Bomb Press. I bought these a year ago, I think, and they have been one of the best things that I purchased for my company. Not only do these have the rounded bottoms, so my bath bombs can dry on these trays and not get that flat bottom, but they also provide a space where I can dry many bath bombs at once. Before I was using this, I was using, I'll show you what I was using. I was using egg crates with paper towels on top of them to keep my bath bombs from rolling away. <sighs> Obviously, this is a lot easier to use. That is where I got them and the link to the Bath Bomb Press's company is in my description and I also use from the Bath Bomb Press the machine, the Bath Bomb Press. Yes, the Bath Bomb Press company made my Bath Bomb Press. <laughs> Here is the bath bomb press that I'm talking about. And again, one of the best things I bought for my bath bomb business because they allow me to make so many bath bombs at once and it really helps on my wrists because I was noticing that when I was manually pressing bath bombs, my hands were getting tired, not with this guy. And today's bath bombs are gonna be made with the three piece round mold, the medium size, I believe. They are quite solidly built. They're kind of heavy, so pretty much indestructible. I noticed with a mold that I used before that was 3D printed. I actually broke it. <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to break these guys. So I stick this guy with the hole on the top to the actual machine like so. And then this part gets filled with mix and then the two together makes a press and forms bath bombs. Before I do anything though, I always check to see what my humidity level is. And it is currently winter here in Midland, Ontario, and our winters are super dry. And with the heat on in my house, it makes it even more dry. So I always check because the humidity 100% affects the outcome of my bath bomb. So let's, let's go check it here together. <laughs> this is my humidifier and I'm gonna turn it on and we are going to see what the level is. 38, 38 is too low for me. So I'm gonna be filling up that humidifier with some water and turning it on and setting it at 50 so that as it's climbing to 50, I'm within the acceptable levels. I wouldn't set it to 40 because I actually want it a little above 40. 45 is really ideal, so that's why I set it at 50. So for today's bath bombs, we are using mango papaya from New Directions Aromatics. And this is an amazing, amazing scent. And for the colors, I am gonna be using Fizz Fairy's bath bomb dyes. I'm gonna be using yellow five and hot pink. So the first ingredients I will be mixing are all of my dry ingredients except for citric acid which I add at the very end. The dry ingredients that I include in my recipe are baking soda, kaolin clay, SLSA, cream of tartar. Is that everything? I think that's everything. So I will get that going in the blender in my KitchenAid blender over here and I have that going literally the entire time on a stir setting like the very lowest setting on the KitchenAid Pro. is a mainly yellow bath bomb with a secondary color of a reddish pink. Because it's mainly yellow, I'm going to be coloring this whole batch with yellow. 
and I take this candy dish, fill it with a little bit of water. I'm gonna add a scoop full of Fizz Fairy's yellow dye, and I'm gonna be adding hot water to the candy dish to really make that yellow pop, and I will show you how I do that right now. I will now be taking my yellow dye and I will be taking this little scoop thing that I got with some of my earlier purchases from Fizz Fairy and unfortunately they don't send out their orders with this anymore but I believe it's the equivalent of a quarter teaspoon. It's about the same amount if you want to be precise and I will basically just fill it to near the top and I will add it to my tap water. It's like that. And then I take my mixing tool and I will start to dilute that powdered dye and make sure it's fully dispersed in this water. And then once it's dispersed, I'm gonna add some hot, hot water to it to really make it come alive. So it's pretty dispersed and I'm gonna add my hot water. I've got my hot, hot water. I've got my dye dispersed and I will be adding it to my baking soda now. And then I like to scrape out the dish to get all of that dye. So we're over at my KitchenAid and we have attached the bowl full of baking soda and we're gonna get this going at stir speed, which is actually the lowest setting and this will be stirring almost the entire time. So now I'm gonna be adding my dry ingredients and I've been asked about why I use these specific ingredients. I use cream of tartar because that helps harden my bombs. I use SLSA because that adds foam to the bath bombs and I do kaolin clay because of the skin loving benefits and it really helps the water to feel nice and silky and smooth. And I get asked all the time why I don't use Epsom salts in my bath bombs. I did. My first recipe had them and those bath bombs were so soft and they crumbled so easily. I don't know exactly if it was the Epsom salts that made it do that or my technique because when I was first starting to make bath bombs I wasn't as experienced as I am now obviously so I could have been doing something wrong but as soon as I eliminated the Epsom salts my bath bombs became super super hard and I never had that problem ever again so that's why I don't do that. I know that there are a lot of recipes out there that do successfully use Epsom salts and they produce hard beautiful bath bombs so I just don't know I think it's maybe a me thing I have no idea but that's why I don't use Epsom salts. adding my wet ingredients and I get asked all the time why do I have so many ingredients I will tell you <laughs> I use polysorbate 80 because I use oils in my bath bomb and I really want those oils to disperse in the water and not sit on top of the water I use a light hemp seed oil because I love using oils in my bath bombs I think adding a skin nourishing oil to a bath bomb really is lovely when you use it in the bathtub and same with shea butter I love using shea butter because I think it adds some conditioning properties to the water when you bathe in it. Shea butter is also a great butter to use to add hardness to your bath bomb and to help with its smooth appearance. And lastly, I use 99% alcohol in my bath bombs to help moisten the mix without activating it. And I also add my fragrance oils at the same time as well so that, that they're all in one beaker and I add this mixture into the baking soda that's still mixing in the KitchenAid right now. A reminder if you're using a hard butter like shea butter or even a hard oil like coconut oil, make sure you melt these guys until they're liquid form before adding them to your mix. So I've added all the liquid ingredients together and one update that I made to my recipe because I was finding that the weather was making the air super dry was bump up my oil in order to counteract that and that fixed a lot of the issues that I was having once the weather shifted over to a more drier climate. So if you're finding that your bath bomb mix is suddenly not behaving very well, 
get a humidifier and buff up your oils. And now, last but not least, we are gonna be adding our citric acid. I don't do the typical two parts baking soda to one part citric acid. I do a little bit higher of a citric acid amount and the reason for that is because I want my bath bomb to fizz a little bit more and I think it's because my SLSA amount makes my bath bombs really foamy so that kind of helps to counteract that. So now that all of that is mixed together, I will be now splitting the batch so that I can make the bath bomb two different colors. And I have these stainless steel bowls that I got from the dollar store. And they are so handy when making bath bombs. So I split about half into one bowl and I keep the other half in here. And then I go ahead and color this side using the hot pink dye and this will mix with the already yellow dye to form kind of a pinkish orangey color which i really like for the idea of mango and papaya together so that's the strategy behind that color pairing and this is what this looks like in there i'm gonna bring this back over to the KitchenAid, spray it a few times just to moisten the batch with water I'm just gonna be spraying this with water. One, two, three. You can see how the dye gets activated from that. One, two, three. And then I'm going to start it up. And I usually go for a second spray. I'm gonna do one, two, three again and start that up. So we're just going to be doing the same thing with this color. I put the pinkish orange color in its own bowl and now we're just going to repeat the process with this yellow half. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and we'll get this spinning. And before I press my bath bombs, I am going to turn on my compressor, which the bath bomb press machine needs in order for it to press the bath bombs and have it at between 80 to 90 psi when i'm pressing my bath bomb and it's a kind of a noisy machine so now this half has been wetted with some extra water and now i'm going to transfer it to its own bowl scrape it out here these bath bombs are ready to be pressed so my technique actually also changed with the dryness and the climate. I found that my level of packing it down wasn't enough and the bath bombs were falling apart. So now with the drier climate, I'm packing it in a little bit more and along with the higher amount of oil in my recipe, I found that that has fixed my cracking bombs problem. So how I pack this mold together is I look for the line in the ring part of the mold and I make sure that this is at the bottom. If you have the ring at the top, you will find when it presses it together, the bombs fall apart. So always make sure that this ring is at the very bottom. And the way I pack it together is I put a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange pink, a little bit more yellow, and then I create a bit of a, a chasm in the middle, like a bit of a, what do you call it? Like a, like a tunnel? What's the word I'm trying to find? A canyon? A hole? <laughs> and then I put my embed powder in the middle of that hole. And I'm using a pink embed powder today. And then I'm gonna stuff the rest of the mold up. And when I get near the top, one thing that I'm now doing differently is pressing it down. Just once, just a, a firm pat down. And then I fill again as usual. And I find that that has helped with my bath bomb issues that I was having with the drier climate. And I'm gonna fill it to the top just like that, adding a little bit more in the middle. And now I'm gonna go ahead and press this. And this is kind of loud, so. And you can see that the ball molded perfectly. Yes. And I give it a bit of a twist. I turn it over. I tap on the end if it's not coming out, and then I pop it right out. And there you go. And I find if you pat it down a little bit more firmly, the Saturn rings come out a lot neater that way as well. And it's perfectly smooth. And I'm just gonna pop this over into the drying rack. 
and I'm ready to press the next one. Here is the mix with the little bit of the hole in the middle. I'm gonna put in my embed powder like that. And we are going to cover the top of that with more mix. Once it's near to the top, I'm gonna firmly press down and then continue filling it lightly as usual. Have it fill to the top like so. And you have a perfect little bath bomb with a nice solid Saturn ring. We have smooth, beautiful, perfect bath bombs that pressed amazingly. And it's definitely due to the fact that I had my humidifier on, which right now it reads at 47. Perfect bath bomb making conditions. And now that they have been pressed, I'm gonna bring them down to my dungeon, which is my basement, where I have another dehumidifier going. And I wait until the next day before I paint them with mica. And I will show you how I do that tomorrow. Hey guys, it is now the next day and the bath bombs have dried perfectly. So excited to show you guys how exactly I paint them. And to show you that, I'm gonna get my lovely husband to, are you gonna be painting them or am I gonna be painting them? Either or works for me. We will show you that right now. So for today's Makeup Apply Bath Bombs, the colors that I'm using are Magic Red Mica from Windy Point and also Black Luster on top. These two are going to be diluted in a little bit of alcohol and we'll show you how we do that. And then we'll take a dropper like this and we will just sprinkle it on top. I've had viewers tell me that they tried using alcohol with a less concentration or a less amount and it activated slightly. So that is why I use 99% alcohol because you don't want to put anything that has water in it on your bath bombs right now because they will activate on you. So we just use 99% alcohol to paint the bath bombs to be safe. And so far it's worked pretty well for us and we'll show you just exactly how we mix the alcohol and the mica right now.
gonna throw in a surprise tidbit for you guys. I'm actually gonna demo one of these for you today so you can see exactly how these beauties perform. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So that is it. I really hope you like this type of video. I know that I get these questions all the time, so I really wanted to make a video that answered as much of those questions as possible. I really love filming the demos, so I think in future bath bomb videos, I will be including how these bath bombs actually perform in the water because you can make a bath bomb that looks beautiful, but the important thing is, how is it in the water? If you liked this type of video, please leave a thumbs up. If you wanna see more bath bomb demos, please subscribe. I wanna thank everyone who has subscribed already. We passed 9,000 subscribers. You guys, thank you so much. So until the next video, keep shining, keep smiling, keep killing it and crushing it in your businesses in 2021. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.